Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a few updates on the 5 inch toothpick platform that I'd like to share with you. I mean, first, I'd like to share my motor testing results, and second, give you a bit of my opinion on after doing this testing, give you my opinion on whether it actually makes sense to pursue this kind of platform, is there, if there is any potential to be useful for our hobby. Now, before I get into the topic, just uh, I'd just like to clarify one thing. Guys, I'm calling this a toothpick more for fun and as a joke. And because of the history that is behind the whole topic, I mean, we moved from 65 millimeter to three inch to four inch and now to five inch with the increased amp rating of two sports and this is kind of the history why we are at a five inch platform with an all-in-one wood board now and this is why i'm calling it toothpick i'm not really serious about it i know it doesn't have anything to do with the original toothpick concept apart from these electronics so please don't get upset also, I called this frame the Gate Hunter X, so I'm putting this in my racing frame lineup. As you can see, this is the Gate Hunter RS5, so, so to me, this is more comparable to a 5-inch racer than any sort of micro or toothpick. Alright, I just wanted to clarify this. Now, let's talk about the motors. So, me and Alexandre Avant have been doing quite a lot of testing on this sort of platform. Just in case you haven't seen my latest videos, this is a 30 gram frame with separable arms. I specifically designed for the Beta FPV 20 amp all in one board. It's got a bicycle um, chain ring lock here in the middle, which is kind of the special feature. This is holding the arms together. So, this is the platform I'm doing testing on and I started with 1606 motors and quickly realized, well, these are kind of too small to manage a 5-inch prop. I didn't get the control that I liked. It lacked efficiency, although I have to say it wasn't wasn't as bad as I feared. It was actually kind of okay, but not not perfect. I wasn't, you know, wasn't really happy with it. Then more or less for shits and giggles, I moved up to 2207, which isn't as crazy as it sounds because this is a 6S specification, a 7 so it's got 1900 kV and actually drew only 45 amps, so no issue for the Beta FPV board and surprise, surprise, all of my control feel was back, the thing was super locked in the air, really great um, control, pretty good performance, lacked some top end but handled just great. Now, of course, 2207 on this frame is just super pointless because they are simply too heavy to uh, be reliable in crashes. The arms are just too thin to withstand a 30 gram motor. So it just doesn't make any sense. I would have to make the frame uh, more robust to, to handle the heavier motor and then pretty much be back to a normal five inch. So pretty pointless. Now, what I'm looking for and what Alexandre is looking for was something sort of in between. Alexandre had really good results on Xnova 1804 motors and what I tested here are Xnova 2204. Now, I mean, I haven't tested the 1804s. I can't really give you a comparison, but from Alexandre, from what Alexandre found out, they perform pretty well, especially on the Jamfan 5030 props. Now, these 2204 and what I know are really perform really, really great. The quad is extremely fast. Let me get those beautiful motors in uh, in focus. These are 2500 kV, 2204s. Now, the quad is just extremely fast on those motors, considering that I was running a pretty low pitch prop. So it was surprisingly fast for the low pitch prop. Pretty good control, I would say. Now, not perfect control, not as good as on the 22.7, but it was um, mainly due to the fact that I have more top end on these motors and my throttle resolution wasn't as good there for So that kind of um, made me lose a bit of control feel. Plus, of course, it's a smaller stator. It's got less torque and it's not going to manage a 5-inch prop as well as a huge 22.07. But still... I mean, it's hard to describe how well in control the quad is and how locked it feels. I would say, I, I would describe this to a freestyle 5-inch built with 2207s and high-pitch props. So 5150s, for example. You know, high-pitch props when you um, kind of give up a bit of control for some more speed 
and and up pitch the whole prop story this is how it feels just not the perfect control not like a low pitch prop on a um, higher kv motor but pretty good so my opinion is 2204 is great 1804 seems to be a good option too now this kind of brings me to the second topic which is uh whether this actually makes sense now to go for this platform, whether it's worthwhile to pursue developing these kinds of um, ultralight 5-inch all-in-one powered quads. All right, now, just to break it to you, <laughs> I think no, to be honest. And the reason is pretty much um, due to this 250-gram weight limit. So in case you don't know, in um, in the US, having an all-up weight below 250 gram avoids having to register your drone. Uh, here in Europe, it's uh, it avoids having to uh, put a this sort of name plate on it, and to, uh, you don't need to have an insurance. So this is basically the goal of a very light build. If you're not going below 250, it doesn't make too much sense in my opinion. And the problem is now that I think you you either have the choice of making it below 250 grams and having a quad that performs well. I know a lot of people are going to disagree, but it's just my personal take on it. So if I put this on a scale, it's 168 grams. If I add a battery, I'm at 278 now. Um, there's no props. So you have to add an extra 10 grams, which means going below 250 on those 2204s is pretty much impossible. On 1804, it should be quite difficult too. On 1606, it would have been possible. I was pretty close to 250, but then um, it doesn't perform well. So what's really the point? Then why would you go for five inch in my opinion? Just go for three inch or four inch and have a way better performance while being below 250 grams. I just don't see the reason to try to meet this 250 gram weight limit with a 5 inch. And if you don't meet this 250 gram limit, then why bother making your 5 inch very light? <laughs> because, I mean, for comparison, I think this quad is very interesting. So this is my Gain Tighter Evo frame. This is a five inch, designed for 20 by 20 boards and all micro components, so micro cam, micro VTX. And these are 2207 plus, so 2207.5 motors. And it's not that much heavier, but it makes a lot more sense. It's 6S capable. This thing is just way faster than um, this very light concept. Of course, it's way above 250 grams, but if you don't care about the 250 gram limit, it just makes way more sense to go for this. Let me show you how much it weighs. So the quad itself is 250 grams. I mean, yes, it's, it's heavier than um, the ultralight concept, but again, why, why care uh, if you're Above 250, you might as well be a lot above 250 and just have better performance and a way faster quad. In this one, the Evo handles just way better than the ultralight concept. It's faster, um, it's more robust. I mean, it's got really beefy five millimeter arms. It's got this brace. This one is really, you can really use this on a track and on racing. That just makes more sense. So in my opinion, Ultralight 5 inch don't make too much sense and also they have been around for a while and never really catched on and I think this is the reason they just don't make too much sense in in many ways. So I mean if you if you disagree with me please leave a comment below and not of, I know a lot of people will but that's my take on it. Now of course one more thing to say is that Kebab FPV and a lot of other people are working on this, so it might improve in the future and might prove me wrong. So I'm not saying this is a definite end, so this is just my opinion for now. And to be honest, this thing is fun to fly and I'll keep it, and it's really cool. And it was a lot of fun testing. Um, all right, guys, now um, that was it for the five inch toothpick so far. Uh, just one more thing uh, check out the video description. There is a link to a coupon sheet. Banggood's got another big sale 
um, the 1111 sale and I have a special coupon sheet for me uh, if you want to support me and um, Banggood is a pretty big supporter I mean all this testing and all these parts are pretty expensive and I wouldn't be able to just throw together that much um, that much quads and do that much testing if they wouldn't just send me uh, parts so if you want them to keep doing it please consider just using these uh, affiliate links and checking out the coupons uh, also it's pretty good deal so might be might be something nice in there for you all right guys um, that's it thanks a lot for watching I hope you found this interesting and useful and of course don't forget to like and subscribe